morning everyone uh, today it's day 6 in malaysia and uh, we are checking out from our uh, penang hotel uh, we'll be heading to ipo today uh, so we have a bus around 11 o'clock our car is coming to pick us up and then uh, we'll take our bus to ipo it will be around 2 and 1/2 hours to 3 hours journey and uh, once we reach ipo we'll check into our hotel and then we'll plan our day trip there so see you in ipo We wanted to experience different kinds of transports in Malaysia so we decided to take a bus to Ipoh and now we are on the way to the bus stop Penang Central is very well maintained and uh, less like a bus stop and more like an airport. It also has an outdoor seating area towards the harbor. You can also book your ticket from this kiosk placed in Central bus stop. Not Ipo to Amanja. So the place is called Ipo Amanjaya. Amanjaya is the bus station name. Like this is Penang Central. That's Ipo Amanjaya. Thank you. Uh, we are proceeding for gate number two. Ipoh is located in the central of Malaysia and is a beautiful town surrounded by limestone mountains. We always wanted to explore the countryside of Malaysia and hence we decided to visit Ipoh. So from here we'll go to our hotel and uh, then uh, we'll explore some local places. Finally reached to our hotel, Hotel Mornington. If you are claustrophobic, please do make sure to check if the room has window before booking. Now we are at Sampo Tong Temple which is dedicated to Buddhism. its structures and designs reflect chinese buddhist traditions this temple was founded in 1912 and sampo tong means cave of three precious and it's believed that a chinese monk who sought refuge stayed here in this cave for two decades and he meditated from here this temple is a significant religious site for the local chinese buddhist people A very important part of this temple is this koi pond where it's believed that the devotees release tortoise it's a symbol of longevity and prosperity in chinese culture we have arrived at uh, ipo mural arts lane so we can see there are so many beautiful 
paintings around me here and uh, so many uh, visitors also came to click pictures so those are really instagram worth you are in eco you should visit this place Ipoh Mural Street is one of the most important tourist attraction in this town and this is referred to art of old town. Just look at these paintings. These are all on the real houses. I believe these are here from very old time. The mural art movement in Ipo was started in 2014 inspired by similar projects in Penang and these murals are mainly found in the old town area the most famous murals on Ipo street were created by Lithuanian artist Ernest who also did many paintings in Penang that Ernest was commissioned by Old Town White Coffee a famous local coffee brand in Ipo which represents the cultural heritage and daily life of Ipo as well looks like we have reached in a ghost town all the shops are closed hardly any people on the road and it's very much on the daylight time we are now at the uh, ipo riverfront road so we came here uh, to see the mural street and uh, we thought we'll have our dinner here and then go back to the hotel but uh, they say uh, they only serve breakfast and lunch here so you cannot expect dinner here so better be prepared <laughs> if you are coming to this place uh, during the evening time good morning we are staying very close to the mirror lake so you can see the way so uh, this way it is mirror lake and there are some other cave temples so now we are going by <laughs> walking so we'll explore that and then we'll proceed for our next destination come This is snake cave. Uh, it is snake mouth cave. So maybe it looks like face of the snake. snake. Yeah. That's it. Also, see. We dare to go inside the snake cave a little bit. This is very interesting inside. Just come. See those areas. Looks very scary. Oh, that's it. There is no way further. Oh, some water is coming. Yeah, that's the end. We are now at Tasik Sermin, known as the Mirror Lake of Ipo. operational now huh? boat ride is operational now not yet uh, 10 o'clock it will start okay we need to enter this tunnel to reach to the mirror lake for many years this mirror lake was difficult to access with no formal roads or signs leading to this site To reach this lake you need to go through a tunnel that cuts through the limestone hills and creating a secretive entrance to this site. 
the best time to visit mirror lake is morning 8 o'clock when the water is stand still after that boating starts here so maybe there are less chance to see that mirror effect in the lake this lake is really famous for its crystal clear water which perfectly reflects the surrounding limestone cliffs the trees and the sky giving the illusion like a mirror This is Kenlon Valley surrounded by the mountains. The scenic beauty here is really amazing. One thing we observe that people have kept coffee cups and the coins maybe for offerings uh, they have kept it here. also a kinlon cafe which is very near to the mirror lake and it's very popular for ipo white coffee so make sure you give it a try when you are visiting mirror lake so we are now at pera cave temple this is one of the famous cave in ipo the actual temple is inside the cave so this is one of the famous chinese temple in ipo as well as in malaysia Pera Cave Temple was founded in 1926 by a Chinese couple who came from China. They discovered the natural limestone cave and decided to transform it into a Buddhist temple. One of the temple's most iconic features is the giant golden Buddha statue that sits in the main prayer hall. It's around 15 meters tall and symbolizes peace and enlightenment and serves as the focal point of the temple's interior. Mural paintings depict scenes from Buddhist mythology, Chinese folklore, and traditional Chinese art. One of the unique features of this temple is the stairway. There are total 385 steps. And that leads up to the limestone hill. Came all up here, and there is a place to sit. And there are places to sit. And this says we reached one third only. Still more stairs are there to go up. visited Kunung Lang but we just spent some time there and came back. The same street we came here yesterday evening, it was completely empty and now it's full of hustle bustle and the local people and there are different kinds of souvenir shops and all. And it was fun to visit here. We are at Tianchun restaurant. Uh, we are confused what to have. So we'll plan for some custard. Let's see. Now we are on our way to Kelly's castle, which is 
an iconic and one of the mysterious historical sites in Malaysia. There are many stories and facts uh, about this castle. As per the history, Kelly's castle was commissioned by William Kelly Smith, a Scottish planter who came in Malaysia in the year 1890 and he was doing some business in the rubber industry. And then he envisioned a grand mansion inspired by Scottish castles. This castle really stands out due to its architectural influences. The building features Greek and Roman columns and even it was to have an modern amenities like an elevator which would have been made it the first in Malaysia. And it also had wine cellar, some indoor tennis court, and rooftop entertainment spaces. No bottles. This must be the way to tunnel. kind of a semi underground chamber really master bedroom <laughs> it's really master Anna? master bedroom is really master bedroom this is the daughter's room and a special balcony Bathroom and secret passageway. Mm -hmm. This mansion was meant to be a blend of Scottish, Moorish, and Indian architectural style, and it was believed that uh, he also brought many Indian workers here to build this castle. But in 1915, a tragedy struck when he suddenly died of pneumonia while visiting Lisbon and after that family decided to return back to Scotland. The castle has a flowing river around it. As per the local Malaysian folklore, many people have cited some paranormal activities here in this castle. Kelly's castle is a haunting reminder of colonial ambition and obviously unfulfilled dreams. Yet its beauty and the mystery surrounding it continue to captivate visitors. Uh, morning everyone from Ipo. Uh, today is the last day from Ipo and uh, we have checked out from a hotel. Today we will be heading to Kuala Lumpur. Uh, so we have taken a grab and uh, we are going to a restaurant for our breakfast. Uh, we have shown you before. So we'll have a quick breakfast there and the station is nearby. Uh, we'll be taking a train to Kuala Lumpur. Uh, the train is at 12. So we checked out a little early just to have breakfast here, uh, spend some time and then we'll go to the station. and uh, 
so many people are coming to see here and uh, uh, yesterday we tried uh, caramel custard it was very tasty and uh, today we are having some noodles so and uh, here yeah, they, they are preparing it to see the vibe This is a old shop, pre-war shop. Pre-war, you say? Yeah, pre-war before the World War II. Oh, that means it's very old. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Very nice, you <laughs> So this is our breakfast, a chicken noodle soup, tau and this is si chong fun. Yeah, that's it. For in Ipo, you must try this uh, bean sprouts. So these are very juicy because uh, this is grown in limestone water. Even here, uh, chicken and noodle, everything is very tasty because they cook it with those limestone water and, and it's really very good. And we ended our breakfast with two white coffees. We are now walking towards Ipo railway station and we passed through some neural lanes. There is a beautiful clock tower here and the station looks very vintage. We are going to board this train. This is going to KL Central. So that's our seat. Looks like very comfortable, very spacious. This train also has a quick snack counter. And here is one prayer room. And that side is the washroom. We really enjoyed the local vibe of Ipo. Now we are all set to explore Kuala Lumpur. Thank you for watching, stay tuned and please give us a thumbs up if you like this video and do not forget to subscribe.